Hello, and welcome back to another edition of the RPG Book Report with me, your host, Logician Tim. That's right. Tonight, we will be continuing on our epic journey, learning more about the Pendragon RPG. And specifically, we're going to be learning more about your family and the fatherland and kind of how that impacts your character. Now, to me, it's always fun to know the history of my characters and their families and you know just kind of where they came from and what they did. Now, in, Pen in Pendragon, this is not just for fun. It's going to change your current character and all of your future characters as well. And we're going to be going over all of this tonight. But before we begin, I just want to ask that if you like this type of content, please like the video. Uh, you can go ahead and subscribe too. It's free. If you'd like to support the stream, I do have a Patreon that's down below in the description, or you can buy me a cup of coffee instead. That link is in the description as well. Just look for the one that says KO-FI. It's on the screen here. It's pronounced coffee. It's kind of a one-time thing. There's no sign-up needed, no recurring charges, anything like that. You just buy a guy a cup of coffee and so you support the channel. Simple as that. Okay, now let's, uh, let's move on to the family and fatherland chapter in Pendragon. Let's crack, crack open the book here. Okay, so let's learn about this chapter. This chapter is a little bit important to you. Um, to me, it's a really cool chapter, uh, but it's important to, for, for, for four reasons. You're going to get four things out of this chapter. You're going to get some background history to kind of understand the past events of the region. You're going to also gain some knowledge of what your family did in these major events during the rise of the Pendragon. You're going to get at least one family uh, passion or directed trait handed down from father to son, uh, maybe more, probably more actually. And you're going to acquire glory that's inherited from your ancestors based on what they did in their lifetime. So very important chapter. You do get some stuff out of it. So don't skip this chapter. Okay, so Salisbury family history uh, chapter. They're talking about, um, they assume that you are starting the game as a 21-year-old fresh knight in the year 485. Now, they tell us that your father has passed away one or more years ago, and that you are a new vassal knight ready to take over for the as the head of the family after your father's death. Okay, So your family history is determined year by year in this chapter by several tables, starting with the year 439. Now, you're going to read the description of what happened, dur happened during that year, and then you're going to roll on the, the event table to see what your grandfather or father has done, if anything, in relation to these big events of that year. So they might be a, a major influence in some big battle, or they might just die right away. Uh, they could even be killed by some miscellaneous reason, like a hunting accident or some natural causes. And what's cool about this is all of these things are going to be determined by rolling dice, which I love. I think it's fantastic. And you're really going to want to keep track of all of this stuff as you roll on these tables and as you go. The backside of your character sheet is a great spot for this. So again, going through these events uh, can earn you glory and traits and passions passed down to you. So take your notes carefully so that you don't miss anything. Okay. Now, first we need to see how much glory that your grand, great grandfather has to pass down to your grandfather. Okay, so we're starting with your great grandfather. Now, he, we know that he would have 1,000 glory for being knighted, right? Then they tell us that you will roll 1d20 and multiply that by 100 for the things that your great grandfather did during his life. Now, you're going to take this number plus the 1,000 uh, for being knighted, and you're going to divide it by 10. Because uh, your great your grandfather is going to inherit one tenth of your great grandfather's glory. Okay, so that's going to tell us how much great grandfather has passed on. Now, your grandfather is going to get one thousand glory for being knighted, just the same, plus one tenth of your great grandfather's glory, which we just tallied. So you will then roll two d twenty. So you're going to roll two d20 dice to determine how much additional glory that your grandfather earned during his time as a knight up until this year 439 date, which is where these this chapter starts. So then once you get that done, we're going to figure out, we're going to start rolling on these events uh, tables year by year, kind of while, while jotting down what happened and any type of glory or traits that you might gain as well along the way. 
All right, so we're going to start rolling on these, these event tables beginning at the year 439. Like I said, each year is going to have two tables to roll on. They're going to be the events of that year and then the consequences of those events uh, with your ancestor. Okay, so some years, uh, it's important to know that some years are going to have more than one event. If your ancestors kind of survived that first event and the consequences there, then be sure to roll on that second event of the year as well. So the events have things like, um, you know, Maybe you died in a miscellaneous way. Okay, it wasn't didn't have anything to do with the battle, and then they have a chart for that, the miscellaneous causes of death chart, which have things like um, uh, like a hunting accident or died of natural causes or in a feud or something like that. So you'd roll on that. Uh, so another type of event would be you served garrison duty, uh, you were killed by the raiders, and you would gain twenty glory. So you just kind of jot that down on the back of your sheet that you gained twenty glory. You died in the year whatever. Okay, your great grandfather died, or your grandfather died in the year whatever. Uh, another event might be you served garrison duty, but you didn't die. You survived the raid and you gained ten glory. So you're going to write add up that ten glory there, put it down, and you're going to move on to the next event. Now the consequence event uh, consequence tables they have things like you're going to roll on any type of passions or traits, things like that that you might have earned. Sometimes you know one of the options usually is no passion gained or no trait gained. Uh, some of them might be that you gain passion uh, of hate, like, for example, to the picks, that you hate the picks now, and you would roll 1d6 plus 6 or something like that to decide how much hate that you gained for the picks there. Now, it's important to note that if you do gain more than one uh, trait or passion like this in this manner, so if you gain um, hate for picks at 3 from your great-grandfather, and then your father picks up hate from picks... Uh, hate of picks for 12 or something like that, you don't add them together. You just take the higher number and that's what it's going to be. So don't add them together. Just take the highest number. Okay. So those are the two, two types of tables that you'll see here, the event and the consequence tables. Now, uh, another important note that you need to know about is some battles will gain your ancestor glory, a kind of bonus glory just by taking place in them. And they're kind of noted above the consequence table. So some bonus glory, so don't miss out on it. It'll say something like, you know, 30 times 1d6 times 2. So you're going to roll the dice, you're going to multiply that times 30, then you're going to multiply that times 2, and that's going to give you this bonus glory. So make sure to calculate these and add them on your sheet as you go for your, for your grandfather and your father uh, as well. So now what you're going to do is just kind of keep rolling on these tables until your grandfather dies or you get to the year 460. And the reason why the year 460 is important is because that is when your father is knighted. OK, so your father's knighted in 460. Now, if your grandfather is still alive, when you get to the year 460, you're going to calculate one tenth of his glory and pass that on to your father. OK, your father's not going to gain any additional glory from your grandfather from 460 on because your father is now a knight. He's earning his own glory. So you, you don't inherit it anymore. Even though your grandfather's still kind of going and earning glory for himself, it's not inherited past the age of your, your father becoming a knight. So yeah, you're just going to keep rolling on the tables uh, for, for him, for your grandfather and your father, and just kind of keep adding up the glory, the passions and traits for them both. Now, passions and traits your grandfather earns kind of from 460 on can be passed on to your father and then on to you, but glory does not, like I said. Um, it, to me, though, I think you should keep up with it because I think it might be cool to just kind of see how much glory that your grandfather ends up with, right? Now, odds are that your grandfather is probably going to die before 460, and if so, just skip ahead to the 460 table. So if he dies, like in the first table, no big deal, just jot down the information, skip ahead to the year 460, and start rolling for your father, okay? In either case, you're going to have to figure out, you know, your, your father's glory here, like I said, uh, and that's one-tenth of your grandfather's glory uh, will go to your father, like I said, either upon your grandfather's death or when your father becomes a knight. So, uh, so yeah, let's figure out your, your father's starting glory here is he's going to get that one-tenth from your grandfather plus the thousand glory for becoming a knight. Easy enough, right? Um, also, you're going to choose whatever passions and traits that your father was passed along from the, his grandfather as well. So you don't have to choose everything, but you can choose everything and just a handful, whatever you want, okay? Make sure to mark those down for your father as well on your on the back of your character sheet. And you're gonna kind of do the same thing with your father. You're gonna keep rolling on each table until your father dies. Now, spoiler alert, 
even if you get to the end of the tables with your father still alive, he still dies in the last battle either way. They, they give you two options to roll on. Both of them, he dies. Okay. And the book was really clear about this in the beginning. And they told us that, you know, our father has died a year or more ago and that we are just about to be knighted. And so we knew that our father uh, has died. So yeah, you're, you might make it to the end, but you're going to die on that last table regardless. Your father is actually. So whenever it is that your father dies, you're going to be done with the tables at that point. You're going to figure out how much glory you are going to get from your father, which is one tenth the same way. And you're going to choose any type of passions or traits that you want from your father as well. Like I said, you can choose all of them. You can choose none of them. You can just, you can hand pick which ones you want and that's fine. Okay. Now we need to figure out um, your glory. Now you remember back in the character creation, we, they told us to, to roll for our starting glory, which was 66 plus 150, right? That's what it is. Yeah. 66 plus 150. That's going to give us our starting glory. Well, this is actually going to wipe that out. Okay. So we're not going to add these two up. Uh, you're going to take one tenth of your father's glory. And I think you're going to come out better. And I guess they did this because you know, just in case that you wanted to skip this chapter, like the family history chapter and just kind of get to playing. Um, but yeah, this will wipe out that, that, that uh, rolling starting glory that we did in the character creation. So uh, to determine your glory, uh, like I said, you're going to get 1000 for becoming a knight. Don't forget that plus one tenth of your father's glory along the way, uh, along with any type of traits or passions that you want from your father. Right. Um, and I think the thought here is that if your dad had hate for the Irish or something like that, that he could pass that on to you uh, just kind of by being around your father and knowing your father could make you have that same type of hatred. Uh, or maybe he was telling you his last words or something like that right before he died. And that's kind of how traits and passions are thought to kind of be passed on from one generation to the next, right? You should now have a better understanding of your grandfather's and your father's history, and you gain some glory, passions, and traits along the way. And uh, really, that's about it for the history part of the chapter. So let's move along here. It kind of keeps going a little bit in, uh, further into... Um, like your living family, uh, where you can roll on tables to determine like your relation to the knights in your army. You remember during character creation, we rolled to see like how many old knights, middle-aged knights and young knights that we had in our army. Well, they have some tables for us that you'll roll on to, uh, for each one of them to kind of figure out what your relation is to them. So they might be your father's younger brother or your grandfather's illegitimate brother or a first cousin, something like that. A couple of easy charts for you to, to go through on that as well to kind of, you know, you can get an idea of who those people are, who these knights are in your army. Now, the rest of the chapter kind of goes into details about your homeland. And I'm not really going to go into this much tonight because it's very detailed and very granular and it just wouldn't make a good video content. But I do highly recommend that you read through this chapter because you're going to learn more about your area and um, you'll know like where to go hunting, for example, uh, you know, where are you going to sleep when you're traveling? Um, you know, some forests, they tell us, are reported to uh, have some strange beasts in them. So you need to kind of be on your guard when you go there. Or maybe you're looking for strange beasts. That might be a good place to, to look. And all that type of detail is in this chapter. So definitely, uh, definitely check that out. Now, there are uh, a few nice maps in here in this chapter as well, which is kind of interesting because... Uh, they tell us that back then they didn't have maps like this. And if you needed to go someplace, you would kind of start off that general direction and then just kind of ask people you run into along the way, which is, is wild to me. Uh, but they say that, um, you know, there, there were no maps. And so, you know, it really made traveling a lot more time consuming and, and difficult than, than we think of today. Uh, the rest of the chapter, like I said, it just goes into the, some of the castles that were around, kind of what they're what they're made of, what they kind of looked like, and those type of things. Fortified cities, uh, different walled towns and cities that are around, and so you get a, a good feel for what's around you. Um, they talk a little bit about like traveling around the you know the traveling around Britain, the travel times and things like that. Again, what type of co accommodations are available for you? There were no inns back then. They say so. Um, more than likely, you were going to stay, be staying at somebody's, um, uh, some commoner's house or something like that, if you could convince them to. So, anyways, that's about it for this chapter. Um, it, it does go into quite a 
bit of detail, you know, don't get in a hurry. Don't skip reading this chapter, the rest of this chapter, because I think it does give you some nice tidbits that are going to come up while you're playing. And you're going to want to know these things. Your, your, your character is thought to know all the things in this chapter. I think it's good for you to know that. So that is it for the family and uh, fatherland chapter in Pendragon. Some really cool stuff in there. So um, next time I'm going to be going over the fourth chapter and it is called Stats and Skills, where they will tell us how to make skill checks and what trait rolls are and things like that. It kind of sounds like a basic game mechanics type chapter, which I always love reading. Those are always one of my favorite ones. You know, how do, how do we roll? How do we play this game? So that's about it. Thank you so much for watching. I just want to ask that if you do like this type of content, please like the video. And if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe. It's totally free. If you would like to support the stream, I do have a Patreon listed down below in the description, or you can just buy me a cup of coffee instead. Uh, that link is in the description as well. Just look for the KO-FI. They pronounce it coffee. It's a one-time thing. There's no sign up, uh, no reoccurring charges or anything like that. Just buy me a cup of coffee and you support the stream. Simple as that. Every little bit helps you guys. And I thank you so much for the people that have uh, bought me cups of coffee so far. Like I said, it really does make a big difference. Thank you so much. I will see you all on the next one where we will be going over the stats and skills chapter in the Pendragon RPG. I will see you next time. Bye.